Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. And I've got Dr. Kelly Estes from Florida, and she's known as the battery recharger. And I think for the audience of uh, the audience are high achievers. And I think she's going to, her experience of wisdom is going to be very valuable. And I'm really happy to have her on the show and give her the platform. So Kelly, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. You're also a podcast host of Unpause Your Life and talk about your story, your journey to lead you what you're doing. And I'm excited to dive right into the meat of the conversation. So I specialize in addiction and mental health with high profile clients, celebrities, executives, and such. And I got there because I was studying to be an FBI agent for starters and realized that I had an addiction of my own to food. And when I had gone to the therapist, they put me on diet pills. They put me on FenFen back in the day. Mm. And I had lost weight. And then they took the FenFen off the market. And I was using the diet pills to counteract the food addiction. And then all of a sudden, I couldn't get them. So I started looking for alternative sources and ended up addicted to speed. So from there, I realized I had an addiction and I had to get it under control. And I ended up studying addiction medicine. And... I did my internship at SCI Rockview, which is a media men's security prison. And my supervisor was ex-CIA. So he taught me body language. (laughs) When you work with somebody with addiction, you have to learn to read their body language because they tell you one thing, but their body tells you something else. (laughs) So I learned how to figure out when someone was lying, when they were telling the truth. And I became really good at it. So I stuck with it. And from there, I created uh, Sober on Demand, where we bring the addiction and mental health services to the client in their home office or their tour bus or wherever they are. And then I also created the Addictions Academy, which is a place where people can go to learn how to become a counselor or an addiction coach or a sober companion, those types of services. Interesting. Yeah. So we'll dive, we'll dive right into the conversation. You know, one thing is talking about is these addictions and a lot of, for example, doctors, they struggle with alcohol, some of them substance abuse. Also. And what is, what is a, what is the underlying cause of an addiction? Is it emotional trauma? Is it just set the stage so we can talk about how, you know, you did your work with clients? Sure. So it can be anything. It can be underlying unresolved trauma. It can be stress. When it comes to physicians, I see high levels of stress because of they're constantly working long hours. They feel like they're underpaid for their service. So you have that. It can also be mental health issues, an underlying undiagnosed mental health issue. It can be poor life choices. If you're not working out and you're not eating for, just have a little alcohol, that'll, you know, calm me down. I will have a cigarette to calm me down. And these things don't really calm you down. They make things worse. So they end up in in that peril. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, you know, moving forward, you're this, what is the biggest, one of the biggest problems after COVID was this uh, rise of this mental health movement. And I think it's because we basically, in the past, we had to live or die to get food, uh, clothing and shelter, right? But now we have all these and basically plentiful supplies. What are the biggest challenges and breakthroughs in mental health and addiction as we head into 2025? So one of the things we're learning is that your mental health and your physical health are related as opposed to people who say, I need to take a day off because I don't feel good physically. It's not just physical health anymore. Your mental health affects your physical body. If you wake up in a bad mindset, you're going to feel sick all day. So we've learned that. We've also learned that addiction isn't your problem. It becomes a solution to your problem. So Uh I like to say, what is your problem? What's causing this issue? What's causing you to behave in this manner? Versus saying, oh, you're an alcoholic or you're a drug addict. We'll treat for that. We're now treating the total person, the mind, the physical, the chemical. We're capable of doing that. So now we're actually doing it, which is really interesting. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Next, the, the next question I have for you is, you know, basically you were able to part, you mentioned harnessing the um, law of attraction. And so how do you, how can entrepreneurs leverage the law of attraction to overcome addiction and how to heal as well as how to build businesses, become entrepreneurs such as you, you did? So law of attraction is pretty simple. It's three steps. 
First, you have to have intention. You have to decide something you want, whatever that is. So I have the intention to, oh no, a million dollars this year, bye. Then you have to have gratitude. You have to be grateful for what you have. So if you only have 10 grand in your bank account, you have to say, I'm grateful I have 10 grand in my bank account. That's the second thing, because the universe won't give you more of something if you're not happy with what you have. The uh-huh. third thing is action. You have to actually get off the sofa and do something to make that hunt, that million dollars. You can't just sit there and go, okay, I wish it's going to come in my bank account and then put on Netflix and watch true crime for three days and then go up. Oh, it didn't come in my bank account. You have to do the steps. That may be doing a social media post. That may be going to a networking event. Whatever it is in your industry, that's how we use law of attraction. So it's a three-step process. It's a simple process, but people overlook one or more of the steps. And then they go, oh, it didn't work. I can't believe it didn't work. And I always say, you didn't put in the action or you didn't put in the gratitude. So we attract what we are, not what we want. People get that confused. If you're angry, you're going to attract more anger. If you're using drugs, you're going to attract more people using drugs. And we see this too with relationships. I hear a lot of people say, I'm always in a toxic relationship. And I say, if you are the one always in the relationship, you're the common denominator. So you must be attracting what you're putting out. So it's shifting that mindset and telling people if you're feeling like you're having a bad day, you have to shift your mindset. And I call that the cancel technique. So if you have a bad thought, oh, it's going to be a bad day today. What's going to happen? It's going to be a bad day today. So you say, cancel, it's going to be an amazing day today. Everything is going to be perfect. Now, not everything will be perfect, but more perfect things will come to you. So when you shift your mindset, you shift your mental health, and you can shift how you view addiction and what you pick up and use if you're in a happy, stable mindset. That makes sense? Yeah. In in a corollary or adjacent question to what you were talking about is, because it reminds me, I used to, during my healing process in the early stages, to check these like weird situations and just, um, and once I started to start like work on like intentions and work on boundaries, these, and started to heal, these weird things started to disappear. So one thing is talking about is this gray zone. It's like, basically there's this entrepreneurs, either whether, whether it's money or people in relationships or whatever, whatever field, there's this gray zone. It's like they're, they're pulled back by their past and they want to move forward. And so they're in this zone. How did entrepreneurs or people in this area use law of attraction to propel themselves forward as opposed to just being limbo? Oh, I lost this for a second. So what we do, if you focus on the past, you're going to get more of the past. So you have to say to yourself, I'm safe. I'm in a safe zone right now. No matter what happened in the past, it's not happening right now. So present and future. I'm safe. I'm okay. I have food, water, and shelter today. I might not have it tomorrow, but I have it today, right? So my intention is to extend that. My intention is to keep that flowing. Mm -hmm. So I have it today, intention, grateful. I'm grateful I have it today. You cannot use law of attraction if you're in a state of lack. Mm -hmm. A state of lack is also trauma, right? My needs are not being met. I don't feel safe. I don't feel validated. I don't feel happy. I have all this stuff in my head. That's lack. That's going to create more of that. So you have to stop that nonsense in your brain and go, wait a minute. That was then, this is now. If I create the safe space now, I can create more of that. The other technique is to draw it to you. So if you wake up in the morning and you're still in that like twilight meditation zone, that's where you want to be because that's the alpha wave. Mm. What you do is you imagine what you want in front of you coming to you as opposed to you going to it, it comes to you. Mm. So mostly if you're folding, present and future, Mm -hmm. you're folding future onto the present. Mm, And it comes to you. You do that every morning and you do that every night and it will start to happen. So for example, I have a client who she lives in the Midwestern state. She wants to be at the beach. So I said, you get up in the morning and you imagine that beach house is coming to you. You're opening the door. You see the birds, you see the ocean, you see the sand, you walk on the sand, your feet are in the sand. You have to feel it, experience it, see it, smell it, right? You do that every morning. And she's, I don't think I can afford a beach house. I said, just didn't envision it. About two weeks later, doing this every day, morning and night, she calls me. She goes, you're not going to believe what happened. I said, you've manifested a beach house. She goes, how did you know? 
I said, tell me what it looks like. Sure enough, a friend of hers bought a house somewhere on the ocean and said to her, hey, I have an extra room. Do you want to come stay? And she just went, I didn't even expect it. It was, I never even talked to her about it. And there it was. So she's, I'm going to the beach house. And she was so excited. Was it her beach house? No. But we didn't focus on her owning the beach house. We focused on her at the beach house. And she called me and she looks like my vision. It's got the same room and the same door. And I'm like, that's how you do it. Interesting. And how is what you're describing? Because I know a lot of people are like, what's the difference between law of attraction and intuition? Because you know, some people um, listening are like, yeah, they're very intuitive, empathic. They can, they feel things. But how does what the law of attraction differ from intuition? So if you're intuitive, law of attraction will be magnified. You will be phenomenal at it if you do it correctly. Mm-hmm. Intuition is like an inner knowing. I know I'm supposed to be a doctor or I know I'm supposed to live in this state. That's an inner knowing. But law of attraction is actually making it happen. So you have the inner knowing of I'm supposed to live in Texas, let's say. But you could live in Dallas or Austin or Houston or Galveston. It just Texas is huge, right? It takes days to get out of Texas. Narrowing it down is law of attraction. I know I'm supposed to be there, but I really want to be in, say, Dallas, for example. I want to live next to Restaurant Row. I want to be able to go to the, the city. You have a mindset of what you want. That's law of attraction. Then you draw that to you and then you create it. Yeah. Oh, interesting. You know what you're describing because this thing where you're saying propelling yourself forward versus drawing it to you, it's because I've, I've noticed like two We'll take entrepreneurs and one of them, they're doing the same exact habits in action. And one of them is doing it from a place of what you described, drawing it to you. And then the other is draw, doing it from a place of, I have to, I like, I need to do this. And it's like the same action, but it's like the intention is different. And the one that's like drawing it to them is actually manifested, um, which is really interesting. Um, the, so ne- the next question I have for you is with healing, especially, how do you use the law of attraction to heal yourself, to heal your past, to heal your past traumas? Somebody burned you in a business deal or a spouse left you or these types of situations. So in these situations, a lot of people are looking for revenge, mm. not positive change. So let's say business partner burned you, you lost a lot of money, you have this anger. Anger is a low vibration. Everything is vibrational energy. Anger is one of the lowest vibrations there is. Mm -hmm. So when you're angry, have you ever noticed what happens when you're angry? You stub your toe. Your pocket gets caught on the door jam, right? And you get more pissed off because you can't get it off. All these negative things happen when you're angry because you're in the low vibrational field. Uh When you raise that vibration, those things don't happen. When you're happy, you don't trip over your feet. You don't get caught on the doorknob. These things don't happen. But when you're angry, they do. So you've got to get yourself out of angry anger into a positive mindset. And I tell everybody, you can win or you can be right, but you can't be both at the same time. So if you want to win, you have to let the anger or animosity of that relationship go or that business partner go. And then you have to vibrate at a higher level. Because if you don't, All you're going to attract is more of the same bad business partner, the same bad relationship in a different human form. So you've got to say, you know what? I learned something from that relationship or that business. I learned this and this. These are the positives I learned. The rest of it, I'm going to let go and I'm going to vibrate higher and attract a better business partner or more money or a better partner or more stable or whatever you're looking for. Don't get caught up in the negative. That's where you go wrong. And then you keep getting the same result over and over again. Uh huh. And is that what you're referring to when people say, yeah, but how can I be happy if this X, Y, and Z happened to me? This happened to me. So how can I be happy? Even really traumatic events, people have been forced out of their countries or people have been raped or all these things. Is that what you're referring to when they say exactly. this? Exactly. Right. And not minimizing the event that happened to you. What I'm saying is if you stay in that event, and you become the victim of that, you will never get forward in life. You will always be the victim. It'll always be, this happened to me. Look how horrible it was. You're never going to ever get forward. So I have a very traumatic story with my father when I was growing up. My father was very violent. I have two choices. I can live in that and say, I'm the victim. 
Uh, or I could say, you know what? I learned something from that. Take that and use that to my advantage and then move forward. Yeah. So that's the difference. It's harnessing that negative energy and say, yes, that's a part of me. That's something I learned. And maybe it wasn't voluntarily how I learned it, uh, but I can use that to go into the next thing that I'm doing. So you're taking your bad experiences and using them to your advantage instead of saying, oh, it was such a bad experience. I'm stuck in it. You have to literally let it go and say, I'm okay. I'm making peace with that. Yeah. Interesting. So yeah, in therapy, we do, we'll have the client, let's say they had, they were burned by their business partner. We'll have them visually sit across from their business partner. We'll put a teddy bear there and we'll let them yell and carry on and cry and whatever and go through all the emotions. And then we'll have them make peace with the business partner, teddy bear. And once they do that, it's like they feel calm and settled and safe. And from there, now you can create. Now you can draw all the new amazing opportunities to you that are there. Because mm -hmm. we all have the same opportunities energetically. Some people just either don't know how to tap into them or they don't feel they're deserving of them. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I, I recently had a podcast guest talking about she has a well, people have said like daily intention or daily she has a daily forgiving practice where you know, where she like draws or or she writes stories one of another client wrote a book to process all those emotions but yeah really so i know we talked a lot about the law of attraction i know we have around five minutes left and You've overcome a lot of adversity and, and now your business is really successful. What, what, how did you, what mental techniques or strategies or habits helped you to build a figure company, um, you know, after hitting rock bottom? So one of the first things I did was I imagined I was standing perfectly still. And you know, those machines they put you in where the money flies around you and you have to catch as much money as you can. I imagined I was in one of those and the money was flying to me and sticking to me like Velcro. So that was my first image. So just coming in, coming in, coming in. And then I learned how to do what I call broadcast. So broadcasting is focusing on sending out what I do into the world. I'm Dr. Kelly Estes. I offer Sober on Demand. I offer the Addictions Academy and focusing on who my perfect client is. This is who I want to attract. And I imagine those clients coming to me. When I do that, the phone rings or someone will buy a course online or they'll buy one of my books and it's, oh, okay. So it's not just the money coming to me, but it's also the clients coming to me. And then I'm able to service the client. And because you do good and the service we provide is good and helpful, more clients come. So that's the trick to it. And if you focus on it and work on them, that person coming to you and that perfect client coming to you, not just clients, but the perfect client. You have to imagine who your perfect client is. Who do you want to work with? You'll get them. Because if you say, I want everybody, you're going to get clients that give you a headache. They'll pay you, but you won't want them. So you want to make sure you get the perfect client. Yeah, really. It's, it's reminds me of like when I started to, I, I used to get like all these like low vibrational clients and it was just like very draining. And once I just started to say, I don't want the money, it's going to be too much of a hassle. I started to get better quality and you, you, and you can feel like you, what you're talking about, like the vibrational energy, much better. Really interesting. How, what's next for you in terms of personal growth, development, new projects and bigger goals? So I have my sixth book coming out in about three weeks. It's called I Married a Junkie, The Final Chapter. <laughs> That'll be out. That's about my husband's battle with heroin. He passed away two years ago and how we went through it all together and what that looked like as the spouse of an addict. So that's coming out. Mm. And then we are also offering for counselors and therapists continuing education. So we've actually come into that market of being able to offer continuing education for therapists and counselors all around the world. Mm. So that's going to be the next big project. Mm -mm, I love that. I really enjoyed this conversation and thanks so much. And all of your, for the audience, all of Dr. Estes's resources will be in the links and show notes and give her socials a like and follow. And thanks so much for uh, what fantastic conversation. Awesome. Well, thank you for having me on.